The deal is done. After months of back and forth and repeated flip-flops, Elon Musk has finally purchased Twitter. He seems to have started his reign by firing people. All the top executives of Twitter are gone. In some cases, they were escorted out of the building. CEO Parag Agarwal, the chief financial officer Ned Siegel, the policy chief Vijay Agari, general counsel Sean Ejet and chief customer officer Sara Parsonet. They all were fired barely moments after Musk took charge. They are not leaving empty-handed. Some reports have emerged. Top officials walk away with handsome severance payouts. Parag Agarwal got $38.7 million. Those severance packages now could get bigger. You see Agarwal and other top-level, now former Twitter executives, own a lot of Twitter shares and Musk would need to buy those out. Add to that the salaries and other benefits like health. So Agarwal's severance package alone could be more in the ballpark of 65 to 66 million dollars in total. And hours after the news of the firing broke, Musk tweeted this, the bird is freed, an obvious reference to the logo of Twitter. Musk has a new bio on Twitter now. He now calls himself Chief Twit. Here is what that means. Reports say Musk could serve as Twitter's interim CEO. So he will be completely in charge. Why was this bloodbath necessary on day one? Here is a possible explanation. Now, conceivably, someone like Elon Musk, and he's sort of done this before, and so someone like him would look at a company like Twitter and say that we've got to tear it down to build it back up again. And that seems to be the pervasive mentality that's over here. Musk wants to tear down Twitter and rebuild it. What does he plan to do with Twitter? We will get into that in just a bit. First, let's tell you how the deal really happened. Here's a quick timeline of the events so far. Musk offered to buy Twitter. This was back in April. A month later, in May, he changed his mind. He accused Twitter of material breach, quote unquote. Musk's team claimed that Twitter officials made false and misleading statements during the negotiations. There was a major row over bots on the platform. Twitter claimed less than 5% of the users are bot accounts. Musk countered that, saying that the number is much bigger. And the two sides even launched lawsuits. But in October, Musk changed his mind again. He reaffirmed his commitment to the original deal and today he bought the platform for $44 billion. That's around $54 for one share. And that is higher than the market value of Twitter. So Musk ended up paying a premium. The question is, what led to this dramatic turnaround? You see, a few months ago, Musk was complaining about Twitter bots, and now he has ended up paying a premium for Twitter. Here is how Musk explains his takeover now. He says he has bought the company to help humanity. In a statement, he said, and I'm quoting, I did not do it because it would be easy. I did not do it to make more money. I did it to try and help humanity, whom I love. And I do so with humility, recognizing that failure in pursuing this goal, despite our best efforts, is a very real possibility. That statement was addressed to Twitter's advertisers. Musk seems to be taking the moral high ground, but as they say, reality is complicated. Remember that lawsuit over the takeover? Musk was supposed to be deposed this month. Already the deposition was delayed by a month. Earlier it was supposed to happen in late September, but it was rescheduled for the 6th and 7th October. 
But just a few days before that, Elon Musk made an announcement. He said he will honor the contract that began a series of events that's worth looking into today. Here's what happened. After Musk said that he will be going ahead with the accusation, Musk's deposition was delayed. The billionaire entrepreneur and Twitter started working out a deal. There was even a court order. The hearings in the case were halted. There was a deadline that was set to close the negotiations, the 28th of October. Now we have a deal. Musk owns Twitter now and he does not have to depose. And that raises a question. Was Elon Musk trying to avoid the scrutiny? Now we cannot say for sure, but here is what we do know. Elon Musk might have faced some difficult questions during that deposition. Twitter's lawyers claim that Musk did not turn over some messages he exchanged about the deal through the Signal app. They were alleging destruction of evidence. The judge in the case, Chancellor Kathleen McCormick, seemed to believe that some messages were indeed deleted. Let me quote from one of the observations that she made earlier this month. I'm quoting, I'm forced to conclude that it is likely defendants custodians permitted the automatic deletion of responsive signal communications between them and possibly others and that those communications are irretrievably lost. And a day before this observation came out, Musk had filed a letter with America's Security and Exchange Commission. It confirmed Musk will buy Twitter. As long as Twitter drops the lawsuit, they filed against him. Musk had to complete the transition by today. Otherwise, he could have faced more legal scrutiny. Because if he did not take over Twitter, a trial in November could have forced him to make good on the deal. We are now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the news on the move.